Hello there, I'm Black Bright. I'm doing my daily roundup and welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're dropping by, please um, press the like if you like what I talk about, put the thumbs down if you think I'm lo talking a load of tosh. And if you want to share, you can. And if you want to subscribe, you can. Um, I'm not quite sure how much longer we're going to be able to watch channels like mine and others that tells you a bit about the news because there seems to, the, the, the reins seem to be tightening by the day. But anyway, we'll go on as long as we can. And um, yeah, I hope the information I give you is useful. What have we got today? Well, Doc, Dr. Michael Ryan. Now, he's the executive director of WHO, WHO, World Health Organization emergencies program and he says in most parts of the world due to the lockdown most of the transmission that is actually happening in many countries now is happening in the household at family level. In some senses transmission has been taken off the streets and pushed into family units. Now we need to go and look in families to find those people who may be sick and remove and isolate them in a safe and dignified manner. Now that is quite disturbing because I'm wondering what intelligence is being used to determine who is sick and in which household or will houses be raided indiscriminately. I mean, on the one hand, they're telling people to get off of the streets in order to safeguard everyone. You know, to protect everyone, we're doing all the social distancing, we're standing six um, feet apart, and we're doing everything that the law is telling us to do. Yes, there are a few exceptions. I still think that's because of confusion of the rules, but by and large, we are following the rules. Now, they're talking about they need to check houses go into homes and see if anybody is sick. And I'm not quite sure how they determine that. Is If it's um, by them checking with 111, maybe that's how they're going to do it. Maybe they're going to check who's called 111 and 111 has told them to isolate or quarantine and those are the houses they're going to visit. I can't imagine that they're just going to indiscriminately knock on people's doors and say, oh, is anybody sick in there? And also, what determines sick? I mean, somebody might be sick, but it might have nothing to do with the coronavirus. They might just have a toothache or they could have a headache. They could have a migraine. You know, they could just be drunk, physically sick. It could be a number of things. So... I'm hoping that the intelligence is 111 or they've been to the hospital and the hospital has told them to go home and isolate and then they're checking up to make sure everything is okay. That is what I would like to believe. So otherwise, it would be awful to think that you're not safe on the streets and you're not safe in the home. That would be terrible. Okay, so that is the first bit of information I've got to share with you. The second bit is the vital ferry services at risk without state bailout, which will restrict food supplies. I couldn't get my bananas today. I wanted to make a little smoothie. No bananas anywhere. And it looks like the queues have started again. I'm not quite sure why. It kind of quietened down. Maybe it's because it's Easter. Because it did quieten down. But, you know, this morning I went to see if I could get some bananas nice and early, 8 o'clock. And there was already a queue. I just thought, you know what? Forget about the bananas. Look for an alternative. So I didn't get my bananas. Okay. Airlines are also seeking bailouts. Delta seems okay. They'll be reducing passengers um, by not having anybody in the middle. You know, you normally have three people on a seat. They're going to have just two people at each end and then a window seat. But I'm not quite sure if they're going to need to miss out a row and then do the same behind. I mean, they'd be losing a hell of a lot of money if they do that. But I guess some money is better than no money. So that is what they're proposing to do, social distancing on a plane. does mean that loved ones can't um, sit next to each other, but at least they 
can shout over um, not too far. Um, banks are being bailed out to the tune of $645 billion in a qualitative easing package. So the bank should be okay for the time being. And um, what else is there? There's 5,000 independent cash machines that will be forced or maybe, well, I think they are, are being forced to shut down. You know, the ones that you have to pay £1.75 pound to use. Um, they did have, they was also thinking about closing down the free to use cash machines, but that's been extended. Um, there's been a sharp fall in customers, but is that because customers are not allowed to go out? Is it because customers have been told that money is dirty? Is it because customers don't have money in the banks to draw out? There could be a number of reasons why people aren't using cash machines. But whatever it is, they are thinking about doing away with at least the ones that you have to pay the independent ones. I'm not quite sure how they make their money, if they make a percentage of what's drawn in, but they're going to be closed down. Um, what else? Some retailers are refusing to accept cash payments. What a bloody cheek. And... Um, <coughs> Yeah, um, what else? Oh, yeah, um, cash payments withdrawals across the UK have more than halved from an average of more than 2 billion in the first week of March to less than 1 billion the first week of April. Wow, it shows you. But then again, what do they think? If you've, if you've kind of, you've got, Nearly 1.2 million, or it's, I don't know if it's gone up to 1.5, but one point, say 1.2 million people who are on universal credit because, you know, they've lost their jobs. You've got another percentage who are furloughed. That 20 extra, that 20% might have been the money they could play around with, go to the movies, whatever they would have done with it. And then you're wondering why people aren't using cash machines. You can't have it always. You know, some a lot of things are going to suffer. It's going to be a trickle-down mechanism where, you know, on the one hand, it looks like, okay, it's only going to affect certain things. It affects everything. And what, pe what the government don't realise is the people at the bottom who are building up the people at the top. So if you take away what the people at the bottom are earning, like the working and the middle class, if you take away their earnings, how do you expect the, the people at the top to be paid? Yes, you've got your millions. Yes, you probably don't even need bumping up. You don't need topping up. But there are a section who are not as rich as billionaires who do need the, the people at the bottom to build them up. They're their buffers. You take that away, and then you're wondering why people ain't using the cash machines. It's got nothing to do with dirty money. I mean, those new £10 notes I hear, and the £20 notes, nothing can stick to them anyway. And they're easy to wipe off. It's not like the old £5 or £20 notes. So, you know, we have to really not let our imagination run away with us. We cannot get too paranoid. You know, we just cannot. Otherwise, you'll be immobilized. You'll be paralyzed and you won't do anything. You just have to think. It's like when they're talking about this 5G then. You know, if it's 5G, why isn't it killing everybody on that street? Why isn't it calling, killing everybody in the vicinity? You see, and you have to kind of think, OK, if that um, virus is genetically trained and is going for black people in the UK, black people in the US of A, but in Africa, it's not, where there's lots of black people. And in Jamaica, it's not, where there's lots of black people. So you can't get paranoid, you can't make generalisations, and we don't know what's going on. 
We don't know what's going on. All we know is that whatever's going on is trickling from the bottom up, from the top down, and it will affect the bottom going up. So, what else is there? Oh, yeah, you know, with everything going on, we've got this, you know, with this corona, everything is coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. It's coming out of your bloody ear holes. Sometimes it means that we don't check up on our contracts. This is important because you might miss your contract. I did um, with one of mine. I had a boiler contract and I meant to end it because I, I took out a new subscription with um, somebody else. And because I missed it by a week. And now I've got to drag on paying that insurance for another year. So it's really important. Just make sure, especially now, you've got time off. Check all the deadlines for all your contracts. Write them down so you don't forget when they're due to be renewed. And you know you need about 30 days, I believe, in most cases to renew without a penalty. So your utility bills, your insurance, whatever kind of insurance you have, your buildings, car insurance, whatever boiler insurance as in my case mobile insurance in some cases make sure you check your checking when the contract ends otherwise in this kind of scenario when you're running short of cash you're going to miss the deadline and some of them they've already told you what the new tariff is and once you let let that deadline pass you've got to pay that new tariff and that new tariff might, might be double what you would have paid if you'd gone on to go compare with one of these compare websites. You could have got a better deal. So don't let the coronavirus take away all your senses. Still kind of think about the things you would normally do. And um, yeah, and see now more than ever, you need to get the best deal. Okay, so um, broadband deals, a lot of, apparently a lot of people with the broadband deals, they've take they, the broadband companies have made millions i think or thousands or whatever it is but they've made a lot of money because people have forgotten to um change the contract or negotiate a new contract okay love island you know i'm a love island fan well luke m remember our lovely luke m he is kindly offering his house rent free to the nhs and vows to pay the bills He's only 24. He needs he needs some legal advice. You can't just make a blanket decision like that. It sounds nice. And I think people will probably think, oh, yeah, people from the NHS, respectable. They're not going to do the dirty on me. They're not going to do this. And they're not going to do that. But people are people. Regardless, he, he needs to protect himself. He needs to get a legal contract drawn up. He needs to not just say, I'm going to pay all the bills. Supposing you say you're going to pay all the bills and these people are liberty takers and they have all the electricity running. Because when, when things are not somebody's responsibility, majority of people don't business. So you can't tell a prospective tenant, oh, you can live here rent free and I'm going to pay all the bills. It's nice enough just to allow them to rent re allow them to live their rent free. That is enough. You don't have to go and pay their bills. They're not invalids. They haven't lost their jobs. They're being paid. So this NHS thing, yes, it's lovely. Supporting them, especially when they've been kicked out of their houses. But you don't have to pay their bills, Luke M. That is overkill. And you know, and it's going to be a hard lesson to learn if you get somebody who's non-appreciative and who runs up the bills. And especially in the summer, they might even get a bloody, uh, what you call it, air conditioner in there. You don't know. You don't know. So I think he needs some legal advice. He's only 24. He feels generous. He's doing a good thing. And he's going to stick. He's going to be with his brother and his um, brother's girlfriend and his niece so he's going to be where he would have had a house to himself maybe he didn't want to be on his own but that is not the point the point is is that i think he's been overly generous and i'm just hoping he's got somebody to guide him 
Okay, we don't want him stuck in there with, you know, having to evict somebody because they don't want to leave. They've got it so cushy. I'd imagine he's got a nice house too. Because those people on Love Island, they don't come out there um, poor. So anyway, the next subject. HMRC confirmed that an online service for reclaiming wages under the Corona Job Retention Scheme, CJRS. CJRS, Coronavirus Job Retention Scheme, is due to be launched on the 20th of April. That's just over a week away, which will be to the relief of many employers. They are now, it will allow businesses to make a claim for the 80% of furloughed employees, paying up to a maximum cap of 2500 per eligible employee. So that's good news. At least they know when it's going to be launched. I don't know what they've got to do to get it or how long it's going to take to process, but at least it's being launched. Uh, there's also the, in The Guardian saying that NHS staff should be given citizenship for risking their lives. What do you think? Do you think they should be given citizenship for risking their lives? As we know, deaths during the coronavirus pandemic cannot be legally redressed. This is what I was wondering. Now, we already know with the Coronavirus Act, emergency laws, that the health practitioners, there's an indemnity. They can't be sued for the death of anyone to, with coronavirus-related um, illnesses. Now, what can, is there an indemnity against staff who, because they haven't got their PPE, their pr protective, their personal protective equipment, i.e. the mask and proper equipment, can their employers be sued? I was wondering how the emergency law um, seeks to redress the um, healthcare work. Would that is that negligence? Would that would definitely constitute negligence because in the health as a health safety executive, well, the nineteen seventy four Health and Safety Act requires all employers to provide such equipment and more generally ensure the welfare of their staff. So. I wonder if the family of the deceased, if they've died because that the employer hasn't given them PPE, which is negligence, can the family sue them? It doesn't say anything about that part in the emergency law. It just talks about the dead. You know, those who have come in with the coronavirus and they die. And then, well, they don't die. There's a decision whether or not they live or die or get a ventilator based on circumstances. And the staff cannot be sued for making that decision. That's the way I interpret it. That's just my opinion. So, but it doesn't say anything about staff at risk of catching the coronavirus because they haven't got proper equipment. So in The Guardian, that was the question they were asking. Can they seek redress? Can the families seek redress in that circumstance? That would be interesting to know. I'm sure they'll find out sooner or later. I'll, I'll keep my eye out on that. So um, what did I put here? If employers are found to be in breach, can family members of the deceased, deceased seek redress? The government has thought about the patients with regard to family members not being able to sue, but have they thought of staff, especially if it's through the negligence of an employer by not providing equipment that might have saved their lives? Well, that's my round, round up now, peeps. How did your um, Good Friday go? Did you have bun and cheese? Did you have fried fish? I'll tell you something, I didn't even realise it was. I mean, I knew it was Good Friday, but then I didn't. I didn't get no bun and cheese. I didn't do no fried fish. I just had my something ordinary to eat. I treated myself to one of those new ice lollies. Have you seen them? NU, with lots of chocolate, with lots of nuts or something outside and they're really thick. Mm. 
delicious. That was my treat. But yeah, so um, we've got Easter Sunday tomorrow. And um, yeah, and then we've got Easter Monday. I think a lot of the shops are going to be closed tomorrow. That is why a lot of sh shops were overcrowded with people today. And they're back open on Monday morning. Anyway, keep safe. The, the weather's going to be beautiful, I hear. So just see how you can enjoy it while you can. Um, they're talking about a more stricter lockdown. Um, I don't know if it's going to happen next week or the week after, but they're talking about people not being able to exercise and all sorts. So, yes, we've got more to come. We've got plenty, plenty more to come. This is just the beginning. Or should I say we haven't reached the top of the hill? We haven't reached the curve to come down on the other end yet. I can't wait until we get over it. Can you? Oh, anyway, that's all for now. Bye bye.